What up guys, I'm Bart and I'm here with Joey, one of the top powerlifting coaches. And he himself have squatted 750. I've known you for a long time, I'm so happy that you're here. Who are some of the champs that you have coached? And because you, I'm pretty sure you're big fans of them. And this is the man behind it all. Some of the champs I've coached, just to name off a few. Let's try to go from the top down. Amanda Lawrence, uh, Jesus Olivares, Russell Orhi, John Hag, Sean Noriega, Jonathan Keiko, uh, Mikey Davis, um, Delaney Wallace, Deuce Gruden, just to name a few. Too many to name. Yeah, uh, I can keep going. No, I'm just playing. Um, I'm very thankful to be here. Very happy to be here with Bart. Um, you know, I started out at Barbell Brigade many, many, many moons ago. They kind of showed me like the first ever little powerlifting community that I've ever experienced. In and LA it, at least. In LA, yeah, yeah. And, it, and it really, um, it gave me a good initial impression of powerlifting <clears throat> and I just ran with it. And uh, you know, here we are now, many years later, many world national titles, later records, whatever you want to call it. And i um, very thankful for all of it. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy that we were able to dominate humbly. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> and today we're gonna go over how to low bar squat. So everyone knows me for being a professional high bar squatter and I have lots of problems with my low bar. So maybe you can coach me through on how to properly do a low bar so that I can be a little bit strong. We will make you the best low bar squatter. So today, talking about low bar squats, uh, difference between high bar and low bar, obviously a little bit lower bar placement. So bar, go ahead and turn around. Um, now, we're gonna talk about grip after, but you kind of, let's start with middle fingers on the ring right here. Oh, middle, middle fingers? Yes. Over that, over that let's there. just start with that. And then um, go ahead and bring your feet close to the bar and just go right under the bar. And then you're gonna want to place the bar a uh, li little too low, come down a little bit. Where I like to place the bar for low bar squat is right on top of the rear delts. Um, with any squat, you're really gonna want to make sure you bring your shoulder blades together, pretend like you, you know, almost like you have a pencil here and you're trying to hold it in between your shoulder blades. You wanna squeeze your back nice and tight. And then as far as his grip placement, this is something that, you know, you may not be able to adjust while you're under the bar. It's gonna be, you know, wider or more narrow depending on your mobility. But the point is you wanna be as tight as you possibly can be without being like unbearable. You know what I mean? Like it's gonna be a little bit more uncomfortable as a pair compared to high bar, um, you know, but, Again, you're gonna, you're gonna, that's something you're gonna have to figure out on your own. I can't just say, hey, everyone should do pinkies on the ring, middle finger, whatever. Um, so the bar looks like it's in a solid position. Um, you know, if you wanna unrack the bar the way he has his feet, you can. I would imagine you'd have to practice that, but let's, you can widen it out a little bit. You wanna bring your hips under the bar, breathe in, embrace, stand straight up, boom. And then you're gonna try to walk out. Try to walk out in three steps. Now you hit the rack there. The bar position on low bar is a little bit lower, so you might run into your rack. If you're used to a high bar position, you might need to change it. He's got his feet set. Um, so now, Bart, you're gonna bring your head up. Look straight. You're gonna breathe in. Brace hard. And then you're gonna break at the hips and knees together. Maintain a neutral spine. Try to make sure you're flexing your abs. Um, some, some like to say ribs down. Uh, as long You could literally just flex your abs. Make sure you're not overextending too much at the low back. So breathe in, brace, break at the hips and knees together, maintain pressure over midfoot. Let your knees and hips, you know, track how they need to track. You know, you don't need to try to pretend to, um, you know, not let your knees go forward or anything like that. If they have to, for you to hit depth, then do it. So again, breathe in, brace. He's gonna break at the hips and knees together. He's trying to maintain as much pressure as he can over midfoot. If you're having trouble, let's say your heels are coming up off the ground, really quick, Bart, before you go down, just move your stance out a tiny bit. Let's go a centimeter. Yeah, there you go. Same thing. So breathe in, brace, break at the hips and knees, neutral spine, and descend. You think about carrying the weight controlled into the hole, right? Full range of motion, boom, pop up. There you go. Let's go one more. Just like that. Um, you want to try to you know, reduce the amount of low back rounding uh, as best you can. You may need to mess with your stance width. You may need to adjust your shoes. It really depends on the person. Everybody's got different mobility. Um, you know, in, in order to maintain that pressure over midfoot and keep those heels flat, that is going to be something you have to play with. Footwear, stance width, whatever. So let's go, let's go one more. Yep. 
Um, and then as far as what you're doing with your head, you could look straight, you could look at the floor out in front of you. Um, it really depends, but you want to keep your head neutral. You want to think of all of this right here is just in line, right? He's locked in here. This is nice and straight. Shoulder, blade, shoulder blades uh, nice and tight. Now, some people, they like to cue elbows down. I don't think you necessarily need to always do that because you just probably can't if you're just starting out. You don't have the ability to do so mobility wise. Um, it really depends on the person. I would say it is not a bad cue. Um, he has his elbows nice and down. You know, yeah, some people are gonna start out like that. That's just kind of how they are. And then over time, the more you do it, you're probably gonna naturally, you know, get your elbows down. And, and it's just gonna, at the end of the day, you wanna keep this tight. As long as you're maintaining tightness here, the bar is nice and locked in. If you guys notice, look how much of the bar is touching his back, right? That's a lot of stability. He's gonna have a lot of control over the bar and that's just gonna allow him to control the weight through space um, a lot better than he could maybe if he only had, you know, a tiny part of his back touching the bar. So yeah, I think that's good. Let's go ahead and rack it. <laughs> nice and easy. And then just be careful not to pinch your hands. Again, with hand placement, um, you're gonna have to find a nice sweet spot between what is, that's gonna be the biggest thing, right? Is, is not destroying your shoulders, not being super uncomfortable, um, but you wanna put your hands on the bar in a way that's gonna allow you to maintain that tightness, support the weight on your back. And then again, um, the more weight you lift, this bar may start to bend and you may need to adjust your hands even more, but um, you know that's more of an advanced thing. But yeah, that's pretty much the low bar squat. It's really useful for like lifting the most amount of weight possible because we're gonna engage a lot of the big muscles on the back side of your leg. You could do it with a heel or a flat. Um, I like flats personally because it allows me to really engage my hips and I feel like I have a lot of power out of the hole while I'm controlling all that big weight. Whereas if I'm doing, you know, if I'm wearing heels, I'm, I'm taking the pressure away from those big muscles and just putting it more on my knees. And like, if you think about your hips versus your knees, who's gonna be able to overpower what? I mean, I think hips are gonna win out. Um, but everybody's different. You gotta try you know, different combinations of things, find out what works best for you. And um, yeah, that's the low bar squat. So one of the more common questions that we get when it comes to low bar, with especially someone that is crossing over from general fitness or bodybuilding into powerlifting and they wanna go into more powerlifting specific movement, with the bar that low on the back, will it slip off? Like how often has, have you seen it slip off? So if you are a beginner, and you're not very you know, well built, like you have like no back muscle. I definitely would not recommend, like literally just starting out, I would not start out with low bar because you haven't built, let's turn around real quick, you haven't built this, bring, your, bring it in together, yeah. This muscle right here, the rear delt where the bar was sitting on Bart, he's been training his, probably his whole life. He could probably do a bunch of pull-ups, he's probably super strong, you know what I'm saying? He could probably do like, you know, a bunch of weight uh, on his back. So he's already built up his rear delts. He's got traps, you know, he's got his whole anatomy going on here. So the bar's gonna sit nice and snug right, right on his back, right? And this is why, you know, I think training your back, it helps all three lifts, right? But specifically in the low bar squat, it's really gonna make, make a nice shelf, the bigger and stronger you can build your back. So if you're a beginner, you may not have the ability to support the, you know, the weight on your back because you're just not developed there. Um, and you know, you're gonna wanna start with a higher bar position. Um, but, but even then, you know, you can see bar has like some nice traps going on right here. That takes time to build. So for a beginner, you know, I would say you gotta build up your back a little bit before you can do that. Um, the bar probably isn't gonna roll down your back also because your body is going to naturally, if you guys remember when bar was squatting, we were trying to maintain uh, pressure over midfoot. Your body is always trying to find center of gravity. It's always trying to find balance, right? Your equilibrium is always trying to be maintained. So naturally, your body's gonna kind of adjust itself. You're gonna tilt forward a little bit more, especially in the low bar squat, to maintain that center of gravity. Um, it can be more difficult for you because you're like, if you're just holding the low bar squat, you're gonna start to feel your core get fatigued, your back get fatigued, because your body is already adjusting to keep that weight from slipping off your back. Let's say you're not a power lifter. Um, do you still recommend the low bar squat? If you're not a power lifter, I don't really see the reason to do it unless you really enjoy um, the strain on your shoulders and elbows it, it, it brings you. I mean, honestly, if you're a bodybuilder and you really wanna just like overload your glutes um, and really hit you know, your glute ham tie-in and the inside of your leg, 
maybe. Um, but personally, for general purpose, like I wouldn't do it. I would just stick with the high bar squat because one, it's more convenient. I don't have to dread like, oh, I need to tighten my wrist wraps. I need to, you know, really mentally prepare myself to be uncomfortable because it is a little bit uncomfortable to be in that position. Um, but I, I would not, like when I used to train regular people, I would not, uh, I would very rarely have them ever do low bar. It would really just, if they wanted to go heavy or if they wanted to, um, like really focus on the glutes, lifting like more weight, kind of targeting the posterior chain. I mean, I think low bar is a little bit better than high bar. Um, but no, I don't, I think you could completely like ignore it and be, build a great physique, be healthy, squat nice and not even do it at all. Got it. Uh, generally speaking, because most people are trying to push max weight with a low bar position, can you handle more weight with low bar compared to high bar? Generally, yes. I would say probably 85, 90% of people are going to be able to lift more weight um, using a low bar position because again, you have more stability. More of the bar is touching your back, so you're gonna have better control over the weight you're trying to lift. You're gonna be kind of focusing and diverting that weight to bigger, stronger muscles. Um, but again, there are always outliers. You're, in everything that you see, you're gonna see someone that's doing something different than the norm, yeah. and they're gonna be able to get away with a, a lot more weight you know, with the high bar, mid bar position, just because maybe genetically they have unbelievably sturdy knees, they have crazy ankle mobility, and they're just genetically built to have, you know, they have really big quads, right? Who's a power lifter that you've seen with the high bar It's generally even better than their low bar? John Hack, I gotta throw it out there. John Hack has one of the best, um, high bar squats that I've ever seen. It's kind of like a mid bar, um, but it is it is very upright. Um, and, you know, upright doesn't necessarily mean better, but upright is going to allow him to, you know, like I said, if your body is more uh, just predisposed or you're just stronger from your quads, you're gonna to wanna to maintain the upright position. And how's it gonna do that? It's gonna force you kind of into a high bar position. So um, again, you gotta kind of, you can see what other people are doing, but that doesn't mean you should necessarily, necessarily copy them. Uh, keep an open mind, try different things, and kind of find out what works best for you. One last question I have is, in terms of the low bar, I've seen probably the most variation. Um, when you're someone that's new, how do you know if you're one of the low bar squatters that might be, like for example, like here, where I've seen people like low bar like this, to people that are even like almost like low barring like like all the way like that wide like yeah. how like what um, how do you determine stance width yeah and if I'm if I'm a new person like what can I do to go I should probably start veering this way first mm -hmm. before I experiment so uh, it kind of plays into whether you want to compete or not like like we talked about in a different video if you're competing in powerlifting you need to hit depth mm -hmm. and the way i like to coach it is you want to widen your stance and adjust your stances uh, to where you could naturally just barely squat below parallel right you're naturally if you just don't even need to think about it you go all the way down and it's just going to be at depth not crazy crazy deep because you know for lifting the most amount of weight if you are a power lifter more range of motion like that it's going to be harder for you to control the lower you go below parallel like the chances of success get less and less the longer that ROM gets. Um, you know, and you just have to try it. You have to try a narrow stance. I think I kind of know who or what you're referencing. There's some squatters that, you know, they are super wide because they are so mobile in the low bar squat already. They just have crazy mobility, they're super flexible. So if they're kind of narrow, maybe shoulder width, just outside shoulder width, they're gonna have so much range of motion and it's not gonna feel good for them to squat super heavy weight down like deep. You know what I'm saying? It's just not it's just not fun. If you go wider, you're kind of reducing some of that range of motion. You're putting a little bit more strain on your body, but it might be easier for you to control big weight by limiting some of that range of motion. And so if you're already like very mobile, it might actually be beneficial to go a little bit wider. A little bit a little bit wider in the low bar squat. Um, you know, but again, you have to experiment. It's not guaranteed. You might find an outlier that does it. I can think of a couple. Um, they're just crazy wide and my hips hurt just watching it. But there's not many of them, you know? And, um, you know, I've coached multiple world records in multiple classes and they both kind of have like a it's, a, it's a low bar squat. It's like a mid stance, um, you know, because we're kind of getting the best of both worlds, right? We're using some quad, we're using some hammies, we're using some glues, some adductors, like we want to use everything. So, um, you know, that is, 
that is generally my take. Thank you guys for watching that video. Don't forget to go to the link in the description to get our latest apparel, supplements, and lifting equipment. See you guys next time. Bye.